Now guess what? You reached Let's Go Free Radio again! <laughs> we got six great items for you today, all about free money and help you can get. But I don't have time to explain it all to you because we're running out of time. So just keep watching. There's six of them. Watch. Now make sure you don't get shut down in Obamacare because the government's shutting down or because of all this press you hear about, you know, the Obamacare program and the health exchanges and the computers are down and uh, and all that problem is because it's only been four days, you know, when I'm doing this, the Obamacare has only been up four days, the exchanges, and they had eight million people. And no matter what the heck happens, you know, and when they straighten it out, and this is still going to be the best thing <laughs> for so many people in, in healthcare. You know, it may not be the best, you know, that we could have, but it's the best that's going to be available. So you got to check it out. And actually, it's for people making up to forty. I mean, ninety-four thousand dollars. They're going to give you money to buy health insurance. Man, you're, it's not going to get better than that for a long, long time. So check it out. And and actually, because things are a little screwed up maybe now and you have to, it's not going to start really till January 1 so you got to uh, start investigating for the programs now that will start giving you coverage in January 1 and then you actually have till April 1 to buy coverage and then you know next year again will be for I don't know how many months or whatever so you have from now to April 1 to buy coverage that will start on January 1 so if it takes a few more days because the phone lines are are busy you know who the heck cares man I, I don't know if you do yeah <laughs> you know the health insurance uh, people are are you know that the companies that you call you know, you wait on hold for three days trying to fight them for something that you thought you were covered for and that you weren't covered for and that could take you a month to try to figure it out so even if it's a few more days doesn't matter and, and here's the websites and 800 number actually I just called the 800 number here's the 800 number 800 uh, 318 two five nine six eight hundred three one eight two five nine six okay I called that here's the website healthcare.gov healthcare.gov so I called the 800 number and they switched me right to Maryland because I had a question you know and, and I in no time at all I mean like less than 30 seconds or 15 seconds I was talking to somebody because I was worried about uh, if I could use the exchanges because I'm also on Medicare and I want Medicap insurance. But, you know, they said no. So if you're a senior and you already have Medicare, if you're not on Medicare yet, you could use the exchanges and you call that number or go to that, that website, you know, healthcare.gov. Uh, if you are a senior and already on Medicare, uh, you know, you don't go through the health exchanges, you know, but you, there is another service if you're looking for Medigap, you know, things, uh, insurance to pay for that Medicare does not pay for. There's another free health service in every state and it's free health service uh, from the state insurance commissioner's office. Here's a website. You call them up and they will help you choose Medigap insurance. See, to me, like the health insurers, the health exchanges and these people that help you Medigap insurance, you want to try them first. Yeah. Don't go to a, you know, some health insurance company or broker or something because they want to sell you some. These people, at least, you go to first to find out your options, particularly exchanges. They're the ones that can tell you get all the money <laughs> and everything. That's the horse's mouth. And they have nothing to sell you except giving you free information and advice. And the same with the seniors program. Okay, here's how to find out by your local uh, uh, help at your state for uh, how to choose health insurance for your Medicaid gap insurance. And that's HAP Network, H A P N E T W O R K dot org slash ship, S H I P dash locator. Okay, so that's HAP Network dot org slash ship dash locator. H A P N E T W O R K dot O R G slash S H I P dash locator l-o-c-a-t-o-r ah you gotta know how to spell this kind of work <laughs> i was never good at that but no matter what they're yelling about how good the exchanges are how good the exchange is bad doesn't matter it's the best game in town you gotta take advantage of it you know you have insurance now you need a better deal you don't have insurance particularly you don't have insurance now contact those exchanges man 
<laughs> be surprised how much money you can be making and still get money to pay for insurance. And that's the most important thing that we all need insurance because gosh, <laughs> it's really difficult to leave without it. Live, leave too, probably, but whatever. Okay, take advantage of it. You know, in this economy, a lot of people are hurting out there, you know, and I, I think it's going to get, you know, not a whole lot better, a whole lot faster, you know, than it is now. So, you know, if you're behind the eight ball a little bit financially, uh, uh, no matter what income level you are, there, there, there's help. I mean, a lot of government programs, some have income requirements, some don't or whatever, but also it's services, free services for people struggling with debt, you know, uh, uh, can't pay the bills or credit card debt, all this kind of stuff. I mean, the problem is we see advertisements on television or radio, people promising to solve your problem, and you're going to call them and one way or another they're going to get money from you. And that's the pity with all this kind of help, is that all we know is what's advertised. And what's advertised, tell you the truth, are people, you know, I spent a lot of money on advertising my life, and I'm only going to do it if I could get money back. So it's the same way with these people. And the problem is when you have serious problems financially, you don't have extra money to give to somebody, you know, but they'll, they'll finagle a way to get money out of you. They spend their you know, most of their life figuring that out because you're in trouble, you're in need, you find an easy answer, you think that's going to solve all your problems, and, and you're going to grab it. And then later on in the conversation, you'll find that, oh, it costs you some money, but you're going to get all this money, so it doesn't matter. And, and you can't work that way, you know, because nine times out of a 10, 99 times out of 100, they're not going to solve your problem. You'll still have the problem because they're hoping that you think they're an easy fix and they won't be an easy fix because nothing's an easy fix <laughs> if you have problems and, and you have to go through it. Now what I want to show you is the help that's out there that's available for those financial problems you have, you know, whether it's debt, credit card debt, uh, paying your bills, these kinds of things. There's only sensible ways to handle these problems. Sure, you could hope you win your lottery, but look at the odds at that. Don't. Try it once or twice, you'll see it won't happen. And the same way with most of any other quick things. Even though you see me on TV talking about, hey, just make one phone call and solve all your problems, it's going to take a lot more than that. Or it's going to take making the right phone calls. Uh, because the phone calls we know to make are people who are going to get money from you. The phone calls you don't know to make are people who don't have advertising money because they're there to help you for free. They're either paid for by nonprofit organizations, they're paid for by government grants, you know, to solve problems like that in our community. And any place you live in this country, it's going to be different. There's no one phone number, one size fits all, or whatever problem. So what I want to give you today is where to go, all the places that are in your community to solve your financial problems, debt crisis, Prices or, or, or bills, you know, problems for free. And, and even though you think, you yeah, know, free can't be good, I mean, that's nonsense because you, you, you have to at least try it, right? You know, <laughs> sure, nothing works all the time. The same way you're paying a lot of money for somebody to solve your problems, that's not going to work all the time. And you're still out the money. So it's silly not to try the free ones first. And that's what I'm, I'm, I'm trying to educate people about. And I've been doing this for 30-some years. And it frustrates me that the rich people know about this stuff because they used to hire me at tens of thousands of dollars and I'd show them where this stuff is. So now I devote my life to trying to help the average person know that these are tools and resources in your community to solve your problems too. Uh, so let's start. You have any kind of financial problems, you know, first, actually, there's counseling pro uh, services that are financed by HUD. There's thousands of them around the country. You go to the HUD counseling office, if you search on the web, I've interviewed people like that all over the country. See, I go in and interview these experts, so make sure that this stuff is real. Talk to them one-on-one. -on -one. Talk to people who they've helped and things like that. These are real people, not just, you know, dreams or, you know, somebody who, who makes a zillion dollars, you know, uh, overnight. You know, these are people who really can help you. So that's the HUD counseling, you know, and, and they're really there to help you buy houses, but any kind of financial counseling. And they know the programs and even the what programs are available in your area and things like that. They know how to deal with creditors and, and, and will help you with all that process. You know, and, and you know who's real, who's not real. You have to contact them.
You know, I mean, this is, you know, to me, a no-brainer. You know, it's free. So it may take you a week to get the C1 or something like that. What the heck? What'd you do last week? <laughs> you weren't any further along, you know, on the process. Now, another place that does that is your County Cooperative Extension Service. That's part of the U.S. government, County Cooperative Extension Service. They have counselors. I've interviewed them, too, you know, and, and they provide those services. They have even experts they come in and they train the experts to help you personally. They even call up your creditors and arrange these things for you, you know, and all that kind of stuff. See, remember, there's no one place. Most of us would like to make one phone call and get, you know, uh, a grant for $35,000 and solve all your problems. Yeah, I mean, that may happen. And I could go out and find somebody if I research hard enough, you know, that that happens to. But most likely, 99 times out of 100, it's not. And you're going to work, have to work at that problem. And see, if you're hoping for that magic $35,000, you're still carrying around the problem. And you're going to carry it around longer because it's going to take you forever to find that. There's no one place like that. So the, the, the smart thing to do, the, the responsible thing to do is start working on the problem realistically. And that's what these people will do. You know, and not anybody is selling you stuff. <laughs> These are people that will help you for free. Now, there's another organization called the, uh, the Community Action Agencies. This is for this is an income requirement. The other two have no income requirements. But you know, now a family of four is considered you know uh, eligible if you're making like forty thousand dollars. So certainly, if you're out of work, all the you know this organization can help you and the income level. Now, what's nice about them? They know the basic income level program. See, every state, every place you have, there's basic you know uh, self-help programs to give you money to solve certain problems. You know, whether it's uh, to pay your uh, mortgage, to pay your rent, uh, to pay your utility bills, to pay your uh, phone bills, all these kinds of problems that, you know, if you're low to middle low income, uh, that you may have problems with them. And so they know about those programs. See, so that's why they're important to contact, at least to know about the programs that are out there. They're called the Community Action Agency, you know, and they're they're all over the country, so you, you're not going to miss them no matter where you are in this country. They're delightful people. I've interviewed a lot of these people to help you. Now, if you're a homeowner, remember there is a weatherization assistance program, and this is important because it helps you with your uh, uh, fixing up your house so you don't have to pay so much in utility bills. Because if you have holes in your house and things like that, <laughs> or lousy windows, you know, and the window guys putting ads on television or whatever to try to get you to buy windows because you're going to save all that money. Well, it, this program, the Weatherization Assistance Program, is all over the country again. And that will give you up to $6,000, $7,000 to fix your, up your home. Maybe your water heater isn't working well, you know, <laughs> and you're paying a fortune on that. So uh, that is available. See, these are programs, again, your contractors aren't going to know about them because you know, they'd rather get your uh, money uh, up front from you. So you have to find out these things yourself. That's the thing that they don't advertise. So you have to find out about. Then there's a low income energy assistance program. And again, when, when it says low income, this this program actually goes up to about forty five thousand dollars, you know, uh, for a family. So it's that's right. Low income. I mean, I used to think low income. Well, you had to be destitute or something like that, but it's not. You know, and there's so many people. You you make it, you're working full time at Walmart and considered low income and, and eligible. You know, for all these programs. You know, so th this is what our country is. I mean, it's a lower wage job that a lot of us have to suffer through um, as we go through life. So that's what these programs are there for. And if you think there's something bad about them, I mean, more power to you. You know, and if you find another way. Uh, you know, to solve your problem, okay, but they're here by law. The same way if they were a tax, if, there were, if that was a tax break, like you could write off this, you could write off that, you would want to take advantage of all those tax breaks, just like the rich people do. They, the rich people hire tax accountants, tens of thousands of dollars to figure out how much they could get out of. Well, people who don't have high incomes, this is the way the government gives out the money too, not through the tax code, but through programs. So to, in my mind, 
that they're uh, taking advantage of a program like this that helps you, you know, with extra income is no different than taking advantage of a tax code. But because the rich people take advantage of tax code, that's where they get their money. <laughs> And the rest of us have to find these other programs. I, I don't see the difference. We, as long as it's a program, we live in a democracy where everyone has access to it. Whether you're Donald Trump, see Donald Trump could even apply to most of these programs. And he does apply to other programs. <laughs> he brags about it in his books. Yeah, they're there. This is the democracy we live in though, so that everybody has uh, access to these things. So that's the low income Home Energy Assistance Program. So you find out about that. And actually the people who could help you with that too is your local community action agency. Now here's another thing, a SNAP program. That's a, a, a Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program. And they're talking about trying to cut that, you know, in Congress now. And this, we used to call it food stamps, but it's really grocery money. You know, you get up to five, six hundred dollars a month to help you with grocery money. Again, I mean, that's for families, you know, like making maybe Twenty-seven or to thirty thousand dollars a year, and the numbers on this program have, I think, doubled in the last few years because of the recession. And they have, as long as people show up, they have to give out the money. That's it. See, there's some programs uh, they have to give up, keep giving out the money, no matter how many people show up. Other programs have a cap. This is one of those that has no cap. And so that's why a lot of people in Congress want to cut this out. You know? and, and actually, I just said, uh, they wanted to cut out like $40 billion on, uh, on this program. And I was looking at the data at the IRS. That's the same amount of money that we give to millionaires who have a second home. <laughs> so you're, you're getting a mortgage of a tax break because you're a millionaire for the same amount of money they want to cut you know, for the supplemental food program. When I heard that, I said, why, why are we sa you know, saving millionaires $40 billion and people can't buy food while well, we're going to take it $40 billion away from them? I mean, that's why, to me, life is a, uh, options, what we have. Now, there's another food program, too, called the Commodity Supplemental Food Program. See, I mean, you'll never remember all these terms. <laughs> yeah. And that's the problem with you. Yeah. Uh, but this is for uh, people with children, infants and uh, uh, small children uh, up to age six and also for seniors. So the Commodity Supplemental Food Program and the same people who, who um, uh, run the programs for the sup Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, you know, the so-called food stamp, will know about this program too. So that's two there. The other neat thing is that you have to realize no one knows everything. Like me, I've been studying government programs for 35 years, and I still don't. There's new ones coming all the time. I can never keep up on them. No one knows. And that's why for you to think you know any, everything is, is silly. Uh, and, and even when you call a government office, because uh, you're talking to one government office that has 5,000 employees, they have no idea what's down the hall, let alone what's in another government office. So to me, the key is finding people who keep track of that stuff, because if they know it all, then you use them, you know, to help you. And here's one of them. It's the United Way local hotline, which is a 211 number. Wherever you are in this country, and I've talked to a bunch of these people run these hotlines, and they're wonderful. They have staffs 24 hours a day normally that help you. Hey, where can I get help like paying my rent? Where can I get help starting a business? Where can I help? Because they have a database of all the people who give out things for free, whether it's money or help or expertise, whatever. That's their job. So the United Way, I don't know, you know, they, they collect money. You know, when you give to the United Way campaign at your work or whatever, they're dispersing it to nonprofit organizations in your community. So they know most of them. And they also keep track of the um, uh, government programs too. So it, it's a good place to call. Again, they won't know everything, but say, hey, you know, I, I'm going to, you know, I, I need rent money this month or, or I need to get a vac vaccination and I can't pay for it or, or I want to start a business. Don't know how. You know, all those kind of questions. You could call that 211 or go on the website, you know, for your city, you know, and look for a uh, 211 hotline for your city. And, and you could even search their database or call them. I mean, that's what people are for. They're helping. Another thing that people don't realize is, I think we don't use enough anymore, is your public library. 
I mean, I've interviewed a lot of librarians over the day and they're there to help you. They know information, they know resources in the community, they're trained to do this, to find out, you know, like I have been doing all my life. They do the same thing. They're for free, they're on your city payroll. They have researchers there, you know, to help you find, hey, where do I find this? Where do I, I need this. I, you know, I can't get, I don't even know how to use the computer. They even have courses to help, help you uh, use the computer. You can even use their computers, you know, and, and they train you. But even, you know, any of the problems, you're looking for money to go back to school or something like that, or, you know, gosh, your roof is in problem. Or, well, are there any programs, you know, to help me get a new roof? They'll be able to point you, you know, and again, they're free. You're going to call somebody, you see an ad, you Google somebody, you know, on the web, that person, you know, nine, nine times out of a hundred, if you Google somebody and you see them on the page, they're going to be somebody who wants to get money from you because they're spending money to be on the first page of your search. So if you're looking for a new roof, you can put in a roof or something like that, money for a roof. And anybody who's selling you that kind of stuff will be, you know, spend money on the web to try to figure out how to get on your first page. And the people who don't spend any money, you know, the nonprofits, the government offices and everything, they don't have advertising money. They can't spend money on advertising because they, they have to give it all to you. That's the law. <laughs> so they're not going to spend money to be there. And they're going to be on page 35 and you're never going to find them. So that's important. Contact your reference, your library, contact the reference librarian and, and, and they'll help you. I mean, there's so many people, the people I just mentioned, all those people, you know, uh, there's almost a dozen now that I've talked about. These are programs that know, and if they don't know, they could also tell you who may know. That's so important in getting information, is not only getting the answer to your question. If that person doesn't have the answer, then you say, hey, who do you think might have the answer? Because you're talking to someone that you called up initially or contacted even through email that uh, they're in the same kind of business. So they may know other organizations that are trying to solve the same problem. So it's important to always ask, never leave empty handed. If you contact an agency or help or something like that, uh, you want to make sure you ask that question. Hey. Who else would you suggest a contact that may be able to help me? See, these are all the problems, uh, programs that you should be contacting if you have, you know, bill problems, low income, credit card problems, all that kind of that burden that we all count around sometimes that we're in debt and we don't know what the heck to do. You know, uh, there's help out there. You have to use these resources. You open your heart a little bit, you know, and, and be humble about your need. People want to help. I mean, it's a natural instinct. Sure, there's going to be idiots out there who, who aren't going to treat you nice. I get that at home too, so they're everywhere. <laughs> but uh, it's mostly nice people. And if you have that in your mind when you're contacting, looking for help, don't yell at people, be nice. They want to help you if you give them a chance. If you're yelling at them and saying, you know, you better help me, you lazy, shiftless bureaucrat, because my tax dollars pay your salary, you're not going to get much help, even though they have to help you. You know, the important thing is to respect what they're doing. Um, you know, admit that you don't know what you're doing. That's the best way to get help, because if you don't know what you're doing, then they want to help you. It's easier to help you. Now, here's another thing you should realize if you have debts and people calling you up about debts, that you have rights. You know, under the Federal Trade Commission at FTC.gov, you'll find out how if debt collectors call you at certain hours of the day that they shouldn't, if they treat you rudely and they shouldn't, you could get $1,000 from them. That's right. So if you know your rights, instead of calling, you know, these people calling you looking for money from you, you could get money from them. And that's powerful. It gives you, you know, power in the system because you're thinking, oh, you know, I'm bad. I didn't pay my bills and all this kind of stuff. So people have a right to abuse me because I didn't. They don't. 
not in this society. There's laws and rules to protect you, but you have to know about them to arm yourself so you get the power in that system. And if you go to the Federal Trade Commission and you look for debt collection practices, they just sued a debt collector you know, for like a million dollars because he was pretending that their debt collection agency was you know, hooked up with lawyers and things. And they can't. That's lying. Yeah? So, <laughs> yeah. so you get money from these people too yeah, and turn them in. Now there's another thing. I think when all else fails, you're looking for help like that. Is your elected official? I've talked to these people too. They're in business to help you with these problems. Uh, even though, yeah, we don't think much elected officials, particularly now what's going on in Capitol Hill, but they do have access to resources, you know, and, and they can make a phone call to these agencies or nonprofit organizations. They have staff people on their payroll. That's all they do is help people with problems, whether it's getting a passport or, or getting your rent paid or, or wanting to go to school or getting a better job. You know, all these issues they're there for. And see, they want, they're, they're actually the only people in the system, I feel, have a real motive to help you. You call a government agency or a nonprofit, they're going to get the same money whether they help you or not. You call an elected official. You know, and they have staff people that will go out and find something that may be able to help you. And if they help you and they get you $5,000 to do something or $30,000 to go to school or something, you'll vote for that son of a gun no matter what they do, right? <laughs> you'll tell all their friends or whatever. And see, they have the power to do that. So this is the fat cats use it when they're trying to get million dollar deals and your vote is one vote just like a fat cat who has one vote. So they want to do the same for you. And this is to me how to use the system. The system is the, being there to use because we live in a democracy. You just have to be clever enough and start understanding it and, and how to use it. Oh my goodness, time is running out. I didn't realize I'd be able to talk too long. So I, I hope this helps you. Those are a dozen sources now I gave you. Places to go when you have financial problems, you know, <laughs> for anything. Oh, and I forgot one other thing. There's one more is for your uh, uh, mortgage. Okay, so if you have a mortgage on anything, condominium, housing, whatever, it, it's 1-800-995-HOPE. Uh, 1-800-995-HOPE. It's the Home Ownership Preservation Foundation. And they have now a dozen programs, government programs, that they'll tell you about. It costs you nothing that can lower your mortgage. So if you're worried about paying your mortgage, you know, or losing your home or anything like that, make that phone call first. Again, cost you nothing. I've done it myself, help family and friends or whatever. They tell you the options and things like that. And by the way, the new um, uh, healthcare program, call that number two. So healthcare.gov, because now, you know, particularly if you're a financial problem, it's probably gonna cost you nothing and you'll get healthcare too. Now here's a scholarship I wouldn't believe when I saw it. It's for dumb rich people. <laughs> That's right. It's actually uh, called the Middle Class Scholarship Program. But listen to what they call middle class. Your income is up to $150,000 a year and you're eligible for this. Also, your grade point average has to be like 2.0. You know, that's just above plant life, just getting through. <laughs> that's what it is. And it's really for new students, transfer students, or returning undergraduating, undergraduate students. So if you're going back to college, it's for you too. Uh, anything. And you get up to 40% of your tuition paid for. So it's almost like a 40% you know, discount on going to school. Man. And just because you're rich and not too smart. <laughs> but it's in California. It's the public schools in California. And there's about you know 30 of these things. Uh, schools all over California. Uh, and you have to be a California resident. But that's to give you a feel for the kinds of stuff that's out there. These scholarships are all over. And there's no one big list. You'll go on the line somewhere and, and say you're looking for a scholarship. And what's going to happen? Most of the time, you're just going to get on somebody's mailing list and then some school who wants to get $40,000 from you in government loans is going to call you up 
you know, because they're just looking for names. Because these private universities, pri uh, uh, private colleges, they charge a lot of money and they get you uh, government, you know, loans to pay for it. They get all the money and who the heck knows what you get after that. So that's why you want to look for real scholarships to real colleges or whatever. And here's how to find out about this. Go to www.csac.ca, California. Dot gov. So that's csac.ca.gov. dot gov. C -S -A -C dot C -A dot gov. Go there. Find out about this scholarship. That's for rich, dumb people. Now there's a lot to learn in this next interview. Actually, this is a product that was developed for an existing market that's been around for a long time, but it's starting to boom. It's a urban bicycles. You know, now at least, you know, where I live in Washington, D.C., bicycles are popping up like mushrooms all over downtown, you know, even in the suburbs and there's bike sharing and everybody's got a bike. My two kids, the boys in their, you know, like uh, late 20s, early 30s, they both use bicycles. They don't even have a car. So this is a, a growth area that this these people are taking advantage of and the area they're interested in is bicycle locks it's a new kind of lock it's a wonderful design when you see this it's a folding lock <laughs> and that's what they call it folding lock like goldilocks <laughs> and, and, and they design this and another thing you'll see in this video is that how long it takes sometimes to develop a very good idea it's not the money they started with very little money, you know, but it was the time. I mean, you just can't think of something brilliant and, you know, you, you have it in 13 seconds or something like that. You know, they spent weeks, months or whatever developing this idea that they have now. It, it's, it's, it's going like gangbusters for them and they don't even have it made yet. They're still raising money you know, on the Internet. They're getting free money to take it to, <laughs> to have it manufactured in China, wherever they're going to get it done. You know? And they thought they'd they they try to get $10,000 of free internet money to have this done, and they're already up to $25,000. You know, so they're more than double, you know, their initial estimate, and they're not even finished yet. You know, at the time we're doing this thing, they're, they're still not finished. So who knows what they're going to get? That's what I mean, the surprise that you could have of doing something and doing something well, and then putting it out there for people to, to react to something that you did very well and you're proud of, and then other people will see that. And then they throw money at you. <laughs> yeah, that's what's neat about it. Yeah. So watch these people. It's very instructive and you're going to learn more about what it takes nowadays, you know, uh, to get things to market. Well, Elon and Mickey, man, you got a product, you know, for bicyclists. Like, <laughs> at least in the States, it's going to knock our socks off. It's called a Foley Locks. <laughs> it's wonderful. Man, it's a, how soon can we get a Foley Locks? I mean, it's not out yet. You're still raising money. You're raising money like a bandit here. You have a mask on and just getting tens of thousands of dollars from people. But when is it available? When can we get it? Uh, well, you can get the first batch. When will it be coming? It will be November. 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 End of November. End of November. End of November. Now we have the the last uh, trials and the plastic injection trial. <laughs> we hope everything, everything will go right and it will be November. November. So then we can get this thing for Christmas, right? Hopefully. Yeah. Hopefully. <laughs> just the first batch. The first batch. Will no, be wonderful. wonderful. It will be. But now, for Christmas it's a, it will be. It's available on crowdfunding Kickstarter, right? And you went on there and you were hoping to raise 10 grand. And you're just what, like, you know, halfway through your fundraising, and you're you're doubled the money you wanted. You got twenty grand already, huh? What does that feel like? Feels awesome. <laughs> feels, people believe in you. You know, you, you showed them something you're trying to do, and you're actually starting to do, and they believe in you. So that's that's a great feeling, actually. Like coming up to a blind date, opening the door, and you got the most gorgeous girl in the world. Huh? <laughs> We feel like the beauty queen. <laughs> the beauty queen. <laughs> well, it's just wonderful. But by looking at the video, if people go there and look at foldylocks.com and your video of it, I mean, it's so simplistic on design. It is fascinating and fun. I mean, that's the whole thing. It's fun and practical and really does the job, you know, like nothing else that I've seen out there. I mean, not a big bicycle, but I, I got two boys who ride bicycles all the time. 
it's we try to we try to make something that's different than the you know the big locks that you could have to carry around and they're very cumbersome or the u locks which are really strong but they're very inconvenient actually for use because a u lock is and many times it will not help you so we yeah. try to make a lock that will be very flexible but when you fold it it's just like you know like this it's it's quite small i know I, no, I use a u lock now and right i i go to a I want to put it up some big pole. I can't even get around it. You know, I got to find a little fence to hook it on, which somebody could cut that fence pretty easily <laughs> and drive away with my bike. Yeah, well, that's wonderful. So you're you're fundraising until um, November 1st, right? And then it's available on your site, foldylocks.com. And, and you, it sounds like you're going to do other products too in the for the bicycle world, huh? Yes, this is our aim to go and to explore this, let's say, the bicycle security world. And we, we do have a few more uh, notions, ideas, and they, they are more, that even, even better. I do. Even, say, better. Even, <laughs> even better! Even better, even <laughs> better. Well, quite different, I would say, actually, the way for, for people that want just a very strong lock, uh -huh. which is very easy to use, the foldy lock will be, like, I think, the best thing for them. But we have a couple of more rabbits under our sleeves, and well, that's next year. Now so you got to stay tuned. Stay tuned. Listen, how was it? How did you guys? You haven't been on Kickstarter before, right? This is the first no. time. So first how time. was it? Was it complicated to figure out, or what was that like? All the process. Yes. First of all, we we worked hard. We thought how to you know how to design it, how to 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 explain. The best way for our supporters, the, what we sell, what we were make, what we make, it, you know, it's hard to, to convince people they don't know you yeah. to, I don't know, to create the faith in us because nobody knows us in right. the States more or less. <laughs> we got few relatives, you know, everybody right. in Israel got few relatives in, in New York and, but still, so it was, it was, it wasn't too, 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 too easy. Yeah, but what, we hope you made it. What was the hardest part? Like thinking through like what the customer has to really know to, to be involved in your product? Hey, we try to we try to show on Kickstarter what's different about our uh -huh. product. We try to show what's special. So the movie as you've seen is quite not Kickstarter standard. We made something different. We want we didn't want to be too serious. I did. So we just <laughs> made it hilarious. No, I, I love the video. I mean, people should just see it for the video. I mean, the, the three gangsters. Were any of you the gangsters? I don't recognize you. No, one, of them, one of them is the designer. Oh, it was. <laughs> Actually, the short, the short, the chubby one. Oh, the short, yeah, 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 yeah. He's the designer. He's the, designer. He's the brain behind all this. I, well, I mean, the design, of course, is wonderful, but, but that video is clever and, and, and sucks you in that uh, even though it, sh it shows you could use it for other than a lock. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we were hoping that people won't get it really as something violent because that's it doesn't look yeah. it's hilarious it's funny yeah it's uh, that's the idea it's always this, this word of locks is always too serious you know when everybody are coming and say ah our lock is the strongest so but our lock is also strong but is also very very well designed and got from a different angle yeah. we really try to 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 make a lock that will look better and I, I really hope we, we made it because I mean, we are subjective, but we find our lock well designed and it's something that you want to have and touch and get it. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it, it, it's almost like a work of art when you see it and, and take it out and put it together. And even the package on the bike looks like a little work of art, you know, not just, you know, you have that big, I mean, people drive around with those chain links. You know, around their waist or something. And they, I mean, just dreadful locks that people have nowadays. Yeah, you know, and, and this is so cool to have. You don't even think it's a lock, and I guess it's stronger than most locks out there too. It should be quite strong. Uh, we tested it our, ourselves, internal tests, and well, we took all the international, very famous tests, and we tested ourselves according to their specifications. Mm -hmm. We should be through with flying colors. We will test it in the official testing 
before the end of the year. We just haven't haven't done it yet. Right. Well, <laughs> can't do everything on the first day, right? God yeah. took that him, yeah. him him or her seven days. So. <laughs> well, we hope we'll call you in a couple of months and tell you, look, we got the gold medal. Look, we right. got the gold medal. Oh. The most important, you got demand. You know, and people want your lock, and it's understandable why. And if they want to know about it and get one, it's foldylock.com. And even if you don't want one, you should go to foldylock.com and watch that video, right? <laughs> Yeah, of course, that video is you it's free of charge. Exactly. <laughs> oh, we worked hard for this video. At least the people can watch it. It's wonderful. You won't stop watching that video. Well, thank you so much, guys. Good fun, and thanks for being there. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. So you bicyclists out there now, <laughs> you all need one, right? <laughs> I want to get one for my kids. <laughs> so that's it. But do you see the sincerity of, of building something and and the, the passion they have behind it, how they want it to be so good? And that shows. See, and that's why selling, you know, uh, or, or, or fundraising or, or getting free money on the internet, that's how you're able to communicate that, not just sitting in a rack on a store, you know, because by doing a video, like they did and how they spent time trying to explain why this product is different that's the important thing too is being able to explain because okay I lock I got a bike lock what the heck but having the time to explain why this is a different product than anything else out there you know and saying that simply in other words someone told me earlier what you want to do is if you can't describe it to grandma <laughs> then it's too complicated <laughs> so how do you get your idea and your product or whatever in the words and you know that grandma could understand you know just in a few sentences and so that's what they spend a lot of time on too so there's things you have to spend a lot of time on I and mean, it may not take money but it's time that's what develops the uniqueness of whatever you have when things are getting tight in the economy like they are now more and more people are going to have trouble paying their telephone bill and there's programs out there that most people don't know about that will help you pay for these telephone bills yeah and they're different in every place you live so you really got to check locally but they're basically usually like three programs there's one called telephone assistance program for the medically challenged so this is people who have you know some kind of medical disability or, or whatever that doesn't let them get around as much and uh, they don't they have a limited income so they help you with your phone bill so check that one here's another one lifeline telephone discount program this is for anybody just for low income and actually these low income programs usually go up to about 150 percent of poverty and that's like somebody making about oh gosh it's like thirty seven thousand dollars a year for a family of four so thirty seven thousand dollars <laughs> hey you need help with your phone bill so that that's what this is. then the other one is the senior telephone discount program so we have three, the telephone assistant program for the medically challenged, you have some kind of medical problem, uh, lifeline discount program, this is uh, low income, any kind of situation, you know, and incomes really go up to uh, $37,000, so that's kind of low income, and the senior telephone discount program. Now they're different everywhere, so a way to do it is you could call your phone company, but you know, who knows what you're going to get there. Another uh, independent place for help is calling 211, that's your local uh, service that finds you, uh, you know, nonprofit organizations and other sources of help for anything. So that's just call 211, no matter where you are in this country, or go to www.211.org. Okay, so that's a 211 or www.211.org. Or the other place is the elder care hotline. This is for seniors, people or people who are taking care of seniors. This is a central information uh, source for any kind of help for seniors. Okay, and their 800 number is 800 677 1116. 800 677 1116. Okay, so 677 1116 or go to www eldercare.org eldercare.org that's www.eldercare.org uh, and, and oh I'm sorry not org it's <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm telling you the wrong number. No, it's .gov. I don't know why I thought they were independent working. So it's eldercare.gov. Because uh, that's a government-run uh, clearinghouse for that guy. And you can use it for an only phone bill, anything. You need a new roof on your house, or how do you help grandma who's out in California and you're here. That What they do is collect all the information, all kind of services, free help, and other kind of services that are available for seniors. 
So check them out. They're there. They're free. <laughs> and they'll stay there if you don't use them. Okay, I want you to be an Iraqi war veteran who, when he was over there in the war, he was always having problems with all his shampoos and hair conditioners and everything when he go to the shower because these big containers they would put everything in when he buy the products at the store. So when he got out of the military, you know, now he designed a product that's all in one little container that has like three or four different soaps and shampoos in it that you just carry with you so easily and change and it actually meets the requirements for three ounces when you travel overseas. Yep. But the important thing, he got $70,000 from the government to work on this idea. <laughs> and he went to the internet and got another $25,000 of free money to continue on it. And now it's ready for Christmas, for Christmas gifts. So watch him and you'll be surprised what you're going to learn. Watch. Well, we have Daniel Jin from South Korea, <laughs> the famous entrepreneur and designer from Korea. <laughs> well, Daniel, you have a wonderful product on, on Kickstarter that you're raising money for. I mean, it's called the SHAPL uh, Smart Shower Container, and this is a great idea for anybody who likes to get clean. Uh, and, and you're raising, gosh, you got almost $25,000 already for your product, you know, and it's a beautiful design. I could see that your young man just got out of design college and boy, we're in a lot of trouble from Korea now because you guys could really design too. You're going to knock our, our socks off all over. So what's your background, you know, that you got into this, Daniel? Uh, yeah, I graduated from Hong Kong University in uh South in Seoul, South Korea, you know, Gangnam style, <laughs> with, a, with a degree in product design. You know, product design is similar to industrial design. Uh -huh. uh, you haven't heard about my school, right? <laughs> no, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, but my university is known throughout Korea as being a top, of, top design school. Mm -hmm. uh, after I graduated from university, I have had my own business, so now I'm a startup. <laughs> Wonderful. And you also got, besides the Kickstarter, you got a government grant all from Korea for your idea, right? Yes, I received funding from the South, South Korea government because they are extremely interested in fostering and charging Wow. They saw potential in my product. And, and so they agreed to give me funding uh, is seventy thousand dollars. <laughs> wow, seventy! That's terrific. Well, good for you. I mean, we do that in this country. Have grant money for entrepreneurs, and it, uh, but you guys seem smarter <laughs> for some reason. So, what gave you the idea for the the shower container? I mean, they're like little three ounce bottles, right, for all your shower products. Uh, when I was solving as a military policy soldier in Iraq, oh. I noticed, yeah, I, I, Iraq, I, I noticed that our shower items were heavy and inconvenient. I, Some days they seemed as difficult to carry as my military equipment. At first, I thought I was the only one who felt that these gigantic bottles were too heavy. I see. I mean, the bottles you buy in the store. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. But right, I realized. I wasn't the only one struggling with this ear telling problem. Okay. And then and then after my mentally period of service in and the military was all over, I went back to my original life as a billion starting product design. Uh -huh. I never lost focus of finishing my great mission that would change the lifestyles across the globe. <laughs> I felt for I've sold for dozens of products and shared my idea with community that mm -hmm. consists of more ten thousand members wow. in all in, in all to find the answer. Yeah, wow. I wanna I wanna I wanna answer. So you've been working on this a long time, huh? Now the, the, the name of the product, S H A P L, where did that come from? Uh, the letters of shuffle unveiled the very whole of our company. S is for sincerity. Uh, sincerity. So the S is sincerity, yeah. Yeah, with uh, 
through which we can have trust in each other. Uh, since sincerely is, is very important to business. Yeah. A, H is for harmony. Ah, harmony. So we have sincerity and harmony. That's great. Yeah. Harmony, which we can communicate. Mm -hmm. And A is for ability. Ability. You have ours, our yeah. Yes. P is for pleasure, ah, which is pleasure. produced by our passion. Mm -hmm. And last but certainly not least, L is for love, uh, through which we solve. Uh, the L in the shuffle is huge part of what drives our vision. Wow. So it's not love of money, but love of the process and love of everything. Yeah, well, that, that's terrific. And so how, how do you see the company? So th this is your first product for the company? Yes, this is my first product. And, and what, what do you see the vision for the company to be? Uh, by meeting your Shaolin needs, uh -huh. we are helping to meet global needs. A significant amount of Shaolin's profit is used for building schools for children in developed countries who like water, not wow. only to take showers, but also to drink. Yeah. This is because we felt the need to help them become well diggers, not just customers of water wells that are dug for them by foreigners. Mm -hmm. Customers of Shuffle can upload their pictures I see. through, oh, their, right. through so the website or through the smartphone application. Uh -huh. And these pictures will be used to fill the school's words, which will nourish the kids with love and passion that you have sent to them through wow. shovel. So when I buy your your uh, the shower container as a gift, part of that money is going to get water in in children and, and villages that need water in other developed countries, and I could also communicate with that village, right? That's wonderful. So you're solving problems all over the world, not only in my shower room, but <laughs> everywhere else. Well, this looks like a wonderful product for anybody who's looking for a Christmas gift. And you're going to be ready for Christmas, right? To ship the product by then and everything. That's good Christmas gifts for you. Uh, it's very reasonable. It's a wonderful idea. And the suction I heard on the video, that suction, man, it looks like you need an, uh, an atomic bomb to get rid of that thing off your shower. <laughs> uh, yeah, put that out of their way. Wow. See, I mean, that's amazing. That's what being in the military, you know, you need strong stuff. Right? <laughs> well, Daniel, you're, you're a delightful entrepreneur and, and, and human being. And, and, and thank you very much for, for trying to solve problems, not only in Korea, but the rest of the world. Yeah. <laughs> it's wonderful to... It's wonderful to meet a Korean entrepreneur and a young, delightful person like you. So, and so your, your product is on Kickstarter, so you can always go to Kickstarter until it's over. And then, uh, and then you go to shapl.com to always find out what Daniel's doing or get the product or anything, right? <laughs> Daniel, a, a thank you note for helping us so much and, and trying to help the world too. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you, thank you for inviting me to your show. <laughs> so appreciate it. My pleasure. Take care. Now, isn't that cool? See, all around the world, they're doing this kind of stuff. <laughs> so we got to do more of it. See, the stuff is out there. You got to work at it. You know, it takes you know effort, but the tools are out there, and you got to start learning these tools so you too can have a product and idea for next Christmas and sell it to everybody.